In this video, we are going to work through six examples where we utilize some of our basic differentiation rules, which means the basic rules of derivatives. Let's start with example A. A is asking for the derivative of the function f of x equals the square root of 57. So remember, the square root of 57 is just a constant value. So therefore, the derivative of a constant is always going to be 0. So f prime of x for part a will be 0. And we utilize the rule that the derivative of a constant is equal to 0. And remember, that's because a constant would just be a horizontal line, if we think graphically. And the slope of a horizontal line will always be 0. Now on part b, where we want to take the derivative of f of m, which is 1 sixth m to the fourth plus 3m squared plus m minus 2. So we ultimately have four different terms here. We have three terms that are being added and then a fourth term that's being subtracted. So we are going to basically compute the derivative of all four of these terms separately and then add or subtract the, the resulting derivatives. So let's start with the first term. The first term is the 1 sixth m to the fourth power. So the 1 sixth in front is a constant multiple. So that's just going to hang along for the ride, I always say. It's just going to stay and get multiplied by the derivative of m to the fourth. Now remember our power rule. Our power rule said when we take the derivative of x raised to the power of n, basically the exponent comes in front and then we multiply it by x raised to one power less. So we're going to apply that power rule here for m to the fourth power. So the exponent will come in front and become the coefficient. That will be 4 times m, and then we'll subtract 1 from the exponent. So the derivative of m to the fourth is 4m to the third. Let's move on to our second term. So our second term is 3m squared. We have a 3 in front, which is a constant multiple. And then again, we're going to multiply that by the derivative of m to the second power. Once again, that is going to require the power rule. So the exponent comes in front, which is the 2. Then we subtract 1 from the exponent. 2 minus 1 would leave me with a power of 1. So that's really 2m to the first power. Moving on to our third term. The third term we're finding the derivative, derivative of is just m. So there's a few ways of thinking through the derivative of m. One way is to use our derivative rule that we analyzed, the function y equals x, which is just a straight line with a slope of 1. So if you remember that the derivative of x is just 1, then the derivative of m is also just 1. But the other way to think about that, if you want to think about finding the derivative of m and treating it like a power, uh, power function m to the first power, then you could use your power rule and put the exponent in front, that would be a 1, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, which would leave me with 1 times m to the 0 power. But remember, m to the 0 power is really just 1, so you still would get 1 as your answer. So if you wanted to use the power rule there, you could. However, it would be faster to just go ahead and use the derivative of x being equal to 1. And then this last term, this subtraction, we have a minus 2. But remember, the derivative of a constant is just 0 because the slope of a horizontal line is 0. So we've used a combination of rules there. And now we'll just go ahead and simplify. So f prime of m, 1 sixth times 4m cubed. We'll go ahead and divide and simplify that fraction. So that would give me 2 thirds m to the third power plus 6m plus 1. Now let's look at c. c looks a lot more complicated because the exponent is negative 3 sevenths, but again, that is just a power function, so we're still going to utilize the power rule. Now we have this constant multiple out in front, so once again, that constant multiple will just stay, and it will get multiplied by the derivative of the t to the negative 3 sevenths. So the negative 3 sevenths, the exponent, will come in front and become the coefficient. Then we'll have t, and we'll need to subtract 1 from the exponent. So thinking about the current exponent, which is negative 3 sevenths, we need to subtract 1. 
But if we're subtracting one, remember, that's really the same as subtracting seven over seven. So I'm basically getting a common denominator. So negative three sevenths minus seven over seven will give us the new exponent, which is negative 10 over seven, negative 10 sevenths. Therefore, my derivative, h prime of t, when I multiply my coefficients, will be negative 3 over 35 times t to the negative 10 sevenths power. So that one used both the constant multiple rule as well as the power rule. All right, three more. We'll get better and better at these the more, more practice we have. So this one right now, it is not written as a power function because of that division. So I'm gonna do a little preliminary algebra and we're gonna rewrite this function before we find the derivative. So first, I see that I have a radical in the denominator. So I'm gonna rewrite that as m raised to a power. Now the index is a five, it's a fifth root, and the exponent is a nine. So remember, when you rewrite that, that's going to become m raised to the nine-fifths power. m to the nine-fifths. But I still need to get this out of the denominator and rewrite it so that it is in the numerator. And to do that, the exponent becomes negative. So that's going to be 10 times m raised to the negative nine-fifths power. And now I have this function in the form of a constant multiple, and that's getting multiplied by a power function, m raised to the negative 9 over 5 power. So now we can go ahead and use the power rule. So the 10 stays where it is, and then we multiply that 10 by the derivative of m raised to the negative 9 fifths. The exponent comes in front and becomes the coefficient. And then we need to subtract one from the exponent. So we're gonna subtract one. I'm gonna do that work up here. Negative 9 fifths minus one. I'm really subtracting 5 fifths. So that leaves me with an exponent of negative 14 fifths. Therefore, once I simplify, p prime of m, five goes into 10 two times, and it looks like I have, looks like I have negative 18 m raised to the negative 14 over 5 power. Moving on to e. Now e is not written as a power function either yet, I should say. It's not written yet as a power function. So you have two options. You have multiplication here, so you could go ahead and distribute right now if you wanted to. Or if you want to use the strategy like we did in the previous example, you could rewrite the radicals first so that they have exponents. So for example, the square root of x is really x to the 1 half power, and then we'd multiply that by the square root of x plus 1. So it's up to you whether you want to distribute first or rewrite them with exponents first. It will work the same either way. Regardless, I'm going to have to distribute eventually. And the reason why I want to distribute is because I don't want to have multiplication here. We don't have a rule yet for multiplying two quantities that have variables. So the only derivative rule that we have for addition or subtraction is when we are finding the derivative of two functions being added to each other, we can basically take the derivative of the two functions separately and then add the results. And so that's why we're distributing here. We want to distribute so that we have addition rather than multiplication. So we have x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. Remember, you add your exponents, so that will just be x to the first power, and then plus x to the 1 half power. So see, we now have a sum. We have addition, which is great because we have a derivative rule for that. And each of these individual terms, these are both uh, power functions, x raised to a power. So now we'll compute our derivative. Make sure you're labeling everything really carefully. This is the step where we actually use g prime. Remember, this is x to the first power. Once again, just think graphically. If you think about the, the function y equals x, that's just going to be a straight line, and the slope of that line is always 1. So the derivative of x is just 1. And the derivative of x to the 1 half, using your power rule, 1 half comes in front, we take x, and then we subtract 1 from that exponent. So that's really going to leave us with a negative 1 half power. 
Now this is a completely acceptable answer, but let me show you some other options. Let me erase my graph here for a second. Because sometimes if you were checking your answer against uh, the computer or the back of the textbook, they will not leave their answer with a negative exponent. So let me show you the algebraic options here. When we have x to the negative one half, that's really one over x to the one half power. So you might see the final answer written as one plus one over two x to the one half power. That would be an acceptable alternative. Or you might find that a book might rewrite x to the one half power as a square root. And they may go ahead and write that as a radical. So that would be g prime of x is equal to one plus one over two times the square root of x. So what I have in the three boxes here, these are all equivalent answers. They're just in alternative forms. And I personally would accept any of those three. Last one, this last problem, it has division. So the previous problem had multiplication and we had to distribute to get rid of that multiplication. And likewise, in this problem, we need to simplify first so that we can basically get rid of this division. So since we're dividing by a monomial, I like to go ahead and do the term by term division. So I divide the first term in the numerator by x and then I also divide the second term by x as well, and then simplify each. So x squared divided by x will just be x to the first power. And then if you need a little intermediate step here, the square root of x is really x to the one half. So we have two x to the one half basically divided by x to the first. So remember when we are simplifying here, we're dividing um, x to the one half by x, we're basically going to subtract our exponents. So that's gonna leave me with x minus two x to the negative one half power. Let me say that again, just to be clear. We're taking the top exponent, which was one half, minus the bottom exponent, which was one. And now we have a difference. So we see that we have subtraction, which is great. And we have two individual terms and they happen to both be power functions. So we can use our power rule. So now we'll use y prime the derivative of y and the derivative of x is just one. Then we have minus the constant multiple of two, the coefficient of two just stays where it is. And then the derivative of x to the negative one half, the exponent comes in front and gets multiplied by x raised to one power less. So if you subtract one, negative one half minus one will be negative three halves for my exponent. And that will simplify to be one plus, when we multiply the two times the one half, so those will just multiply to equal one. So we're really just left with one plus x raised to the negative three halves power. And again, that would be a perfectly acceptable answer if you want to go ahead and rewrite that so that you don't have the negative exponent, then the alternative would be one plus one over x to the three halves power and that would be equivalent as well. And I suppose you could go one step further and write it as a radical if you wanted to as well, um, but either one of these is, is just fine.